Happy Tuesday, too. We're so glad you're joining us for Hope Today, where we love to spend the next 30 minutes encouraging you and inspiring you. And I'm so happy because Pastor Jay is here with us. Tom Hollis is off today. So glad to have you with us today, friend. So good to be here with you, Tom Hollis, all the way down, and, or Tom Hollis, Tom, <laughs> Tom McGuff, all the way down, and uh, Scottsdale. It's going to be a great day today. Yeah, so it's, we're bringing Tom McGuff. You're in Scottsdale, Arizona. Tom, how are you? Wonderful. Getting up, and we're Thank you. And I know it's like it's dark there. It's like what, five or so in the morning? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not quite 6 a.m. So, but hopefully within this next half hour, you'll see the sun coming up right over my shoulder. And it's gonna be another beautiful day here in the, the desert Southwest. Well, we're really looking forward to that. You know, and we have an exciting show for you coming up in just a few moments. You're going to hear the story of faith from the leader of one of the best steak houses in the nation. Brittany Ruby Miller is the CEO of Jeff Ruby Culinary Entertainment, and she's going to share about the trauma she faced and how the pandemic almost shut down their family's business, but how their faith slipped through it all. So really looking forward to that conversation, Jay. Yeah, you know, I love a good steak too, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. But you know what? I love the meat of God's word. And I believe this scripture is going to speak to somebody today. Because I believe this is going to be a theme that's going to carry through today. That I believe there's some people that need to overcome. And this scripture is going to give feet to your face so then you can have that overcoming power. And it comes from John chapter 16 and verse number 33. One of my favorite passages. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you'll have trouble. One translation says you'll have tribulations, but take heart because I have overcome the world. That is so powerful, Sydney. I love it. So what does that speak to you? Because I can tell you're fired up right now and you're here with that scripture. Well, that means you're going to go through some stuff. Just because you're a believer does not mean that you're not going to go through some things. Matter of fact, the fact that we are believers, Jesus was letting us know, have peace because all hell may break loose at times. But the good gospel news is simply this. If you're going through hell, don't stop because you're going to come out of it on the other side better and not bitter. You're going to be higher than you've ever gone before, and God is going to do great things in our lives. We always overcome, Sydney, and that's mm. the great news in the midst of every tribulation. And I know so many of us are walking through things and going through things, but it's so important to keep our eyes on Amen. Jesus no matter what it looks like, even though you feel like the sand is shaking or your feet are shaking under your feet, that we can hold on to Jesus like never before. Tom, I want to hear your thoughts on this scripture. What does it speak to you? You know what, to me, it, it speaks, and this is the creed of every athlete, you are going to go through trial. I used to say to my boys that, that in a major league season of 162 games, there is without a doubt going to be that period where you're going to go through the trial. But the great athletes and the champions are the ones that persevere, that learn from those experiences. And so for you and me, that, that is something that we can apply to our lives, that it is through this trial and the Apostle Paul makes this very clear all throughout his the New, uh, New Testament churches. He's saying to them, he says that it is through this trial, I praise God, because it is there and through these trials that we become perfected, that we become, uh, uh, that we're able to, to learn the lessons that will be with us for eternity and perfect us for that day in glory where we'll be with our Heavenly Father. So praise God for the trial that you might be going through because it's going to be through this trial that God will bless you, challenge you, build you up and perfect you for that day in eternity when we're with him. You know, Thomas, as you're just talking, I just heard in my spirit that the refiner's fire. I mean, sometimes there's times where we go into that furnace, we go into that place, and it is so hot and it is so mm -hmm. hard, but it is so important in those moments. And I know a lot of us are facing different things. There's a lot of people maybe in your family or different things that you're struggling and going through. But we are here just to encourage you today that I just encourage you, press into his presence. If all you got to do is just lay there, all you got to do is call it his name, all you got to do is stand on the scripture, stand on the word, do not lose heart, do not not give up. I know I'm speaking to myself. I know there's a lot of us even in here in this ministry every day that we are walking through things and going through things. But the one thing that we do have that is available for you 24 seven is our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Pastor Jay, have you any thoughts? You know what? And the Bible says also to count it all joy when you fall into those trials. Yeah. But sometimes we got to go down a couple of verses in verse six and it says something very profound. If anybody lacks wisdom, 
let them ask of God. And you may be going through a trial right now and you don't know how you're going to get through it. Let me encourage you for a moment to realize simply this. There is always a revelatory wisdom nugget that is meant to be brought to you in the middle of your trial that will break you through every line of the devil's defense. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare throw in the towel. I know you might be discouraged. You might be depressed. You might be downtrodden. You might feel like, how am I going to get through this thing? Weeping may endure for the night, but I'm telling you right now that joy is going to come in the morning and God is going to give you a word. He's going to propel you. He's going to launch you into your next dimension if you don't quit. It's so important that we realize, Sydney, that in the middle of every trial, there is always godly wisdom yeah. that breaks us through every line of the devil's defense. Sometimes it's revelation. Yeah. Sometimes it's impartation. Sometimes it's a new direction. Sometimes it's a new door, but it's always on the other side of adversity. It is on the other side of adversity. And Tom, I heard for a moment that you were just piping in. You wanted to say something. Was something brewing on your heart that you wanted to share more and encourage our viewers about yeah. when it comes yeah, to adversity? An athlete and, and the apostle Paul used running the race as a metaphor. And, and, and it's a very powerful one. And he said, and, and I think this is important for all of us as believers, forgetting what lies behind. Amen. We reach forward to what lies ahead and we press on toward the goal of that higher calling that God has on our life in Christ Jesus. Mm, that is so good. And even just looking at your background, Tom, right now, just some of us may be feeling, I see like the darkness, but the light is coming through. Oh. And that's where a lot of us are coming in. So even though the darkness is encroaching, even though we see that darkness, we know the light, the light of Jesus is going to shine through and pierce through the darkness. So hold on to that today. Well, you know, behind the success of one of the best steakhouses in the nation is a story of faith and perseverance from its CEO. Brittany Ruby Miller is an entrepreneur and leader of her family's restaurant group, Jeff Ruby Culinary Entertainment. And she shares her story in her book, Five Star Life, The Faithful Fight to Overcome Obstacles and Pursue Excellence. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So and I realized I should start every work day with you all. <laughs> Oh, that, that, just, that means a lot to us. And, you know, Brittany, I just want to bring you into the conversation about this scripture. What does it mean to you about overcoming trials and tribulations and to take heart in Christ? Well, it's exactly what Jay says. We should be prepared. That th This is just the expectation. Just because we're believers doesn't mean that we are immune from any sort of tragedy. But what we have is peace in the midst of it. And what I've found just through our own personal, you know, my own personal struggles and also uh, specifically through the pandemic of, of um, running our restaurants, we have seven steakhouses in the Midwest, is that's our time to shine. You know, that's the time that Christians can say, this is the reason why I don't have fear, why I don't have anxiety, why I have the peace that transcends all understanding. And so, you know, I just think that it's, it's, it's a great way for Jesus to say, look, we're going to, this is not heaven on earth, right? <laughs> if this was it, that'd be, that'd be a sad day. We have hope that there is joy and that there's peace on the other side of it. You know, and we have hope in heaven. We do. Have I like the kingdom heaven. approach to, to everything that I run through uh, daily is knowing that, that you've got to keep your mind on kingdom, not on earth. That is such a powerful point. We got to keep our mind on kingdom and not on earth. And I don't want to pass over what you like brought up. You know, you're a CEO of, you know, a family owned restaurant group and going through the pandemic. I mean, talk to us a little bit about that. You know, you're, you oversee hundreds of employees in the Midwest. You're a thriving restaurant group. And then the pandemic hits, you know, and we know the restaurant industry was really impacted. So talk to us a little bit about that and your experiences and how you guys just like pushed on through and used your faith and through it all. Yeah, so a little backstory about our company. We have seven steakhouses, a couple in, uh, in Kentucky, one in Nashville, four in Ohio, USDA prime steakhouses, high volume, and, um, but we're, sh we're chef-driven steakhouses. And so my father built the company 40 years ago. I'm generation two, grew up in the operations with my brothers for about, um, gosh, 20 years. And, and then uh, we, we expanded in the past four years. We've opened three restaurants, so we've doubled in size. And um, what a crazy time to, um, we thought we were gonna be taking a breath from expansion and then the pandemic hit and I furloughed 621 employees really overnight, put our company to sleep. Um, and all I could do was rely on God for that. You know, we've had um, tremendous success even through COVID and all of it is a miracle really from, from God just having his hand on our company and, and pressing into it every single day. You know, I, I, I've never prayed more in my entire life and God has, been faithful and uh, rewarded us for that. 
And I'm just like interesting to hear, Brittany, can you share just a miracle that you saw? I mean, I, I can't even imagine the stress of it all and just what you all were going through and enduring. You know, my husband works in the restaurant industry, so I just understand it was, it, it was, it's re it was really, really tough. But can you share just a miracle that you saw just happen through the power of prayer? Yeah, I think um, the biggest miracle that I saw, one, well, there's two. I mean, our company came out on the other side and we're going to be just fine. And and that is all God. God. We The first couple of days I was watching a cash burn. Like, I've, uh, how is this going to be stable? How is this going to be okay? Through the Ohio Restaurant Association, I was asked to um, step into an arena of politics, which I really cared little about. So I was able to lobby on the federal level for the Paycheck Protection Program. So that in and of itself was miraculous. My father's always been a political supporter. So we were able to leverage those relationships and have active involvement every day with senators to get the PPP passed. The problem with the PPP, what most people don't know, it was an eight week forgiveness period. Well, restaurants weren't open. So we needed that extended to 24 weeks where the Ohio Restaurant Association and the National Restaurant Association were really pushing. It doesn't make sense to forgive payment. I, I, I kind of joked around with these senators and said, what am I asking for forgiveness um, on payroll? for ghosts. I, I don't have anybody in my restaurants. I don't have revenue. Like we need this extended. There was one outlier. He was a senator from Wisconsin is uh, Senator Johnson. And he was not on board with getting this thing signed off. And um, nobody could reach him. The National Restaurant Association couldn't reach him. And we took a shot in the dark. We sent an email from Jeff Ruby, my father's email, outlining the American quintessential dream and how if he didn't sign off that day, hundreds of thousands of restaurants would close permanently. 20 minutes later, we got a call from his chief of staff, Tony Blando. And later that day, we were on the call with the senator's office. Halfway through the call, he signed off on the bill and we got the PPP extended to 24 weeks. That was all God. I mean, even just obtaining his email, I was on Ohio Governor DeWine's task force. And so I had access to, um, you know, Tina Husted, who's Lieutenant Governor John Husted's wife. Uh, all of that was miraculous and such glory to God, because I'm telling you, had he not signed off, restaurants would the whole industry would have been decimated wow well you know Brittany, they have a word for that that's called favor <laughs> one of my favorite statements to make is that god gives you favor that removes the labor and that's what i'm hearing but you know there's maybe people out there right now that are really struggling and maybe you know you're coming out of it doing well what would you say to business owners that may be watching that may still be struggling out there trying to get their feet on the ground trying to get i know a lot of people trying to hire employees get employees back what would be just some encouragement or something that you've done that you can encourage someone else to do to bring them through this season? Yeah, I, I will tell you that it breaks my heart, the mom and pops and the small businesses. Um, and I get asked that question a lot. You know, is there hope? What do we see from 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 the administration or leadership? And, you know, there, we are in, in tough, tough times right now. And again, you go back to, to John and we expect that we're gonna have trials and, and tribulations, that that's just where we are, surrender to that. But I think first and foremost, you have to understand that God has a destiny, right? And that's the reason why I wrote this book. Five Star Life isn't about living, you know, some crazy like rapper dream, you're on yachts, Five Star Life. I grew up in fine dining, five star restaurants and it dawned on me that God also wants us to live a five star life. And I've been through back, literally hell and back um, personally, you know, multiple, multiple miscarriages. My father almost died when I was five. He was in a coma for a month and pronounced brain dead with a 2% chance of living, miraculously walked out smarter than any neurosurgeon on the case, higher IQ. I mean, total miracle. Uh, I went through infertility, uh, infidelity in my marriage, just everything that you can imagine. I, I have a, a rare gene mutation that prohibits me from having healthy babies. I have three healthy babies now. Wow. God has been so miraculous in my life. And when I look at all the miracles, it's like Danny Gokey's song, song, you haven't seen it yet, right? You have to think back to every miracle he's ever performed in your life or someone around and know that that's the same God right now that can per, that can make that miracle happen, that can bring that miracle to fruition. I also think business leaders need to be wise. And so a lot of, um, there can be a lot of owners in restaurants specifically that love restaurants in this American dream. You also have to have advisors around you that can talk to you about the numbers, can talk to you about your cash flow, can talk to you about your expenses. You, you know, it's, it's, you can't just dream about, I love a restaurant and I want to run a restaurant. You've, you've got to have the business sense as well. And even though that might not be your gift and your calling, there are people that you can surround yourself with that can help you through that. And that has been key. Mentors have been key for me and my family business. 
You know, Brittany, I just love just hearing your testimony, what you've walked through and just like the success, but also just like the struggles that you've gone through and just really how you've had to lean on God. Can you just talk to us for a minute about what that tangibly looks like in your life? I mean, when you're going through things, it's like, the tr it's just trauma. You know, a lot of us are walking through trauma, enduring through things. What does it tangibly look like on our day to day when we're going through adversity, when we feel like I cannot go another day? What would you say that that person can do right now and just to start seeing God move? Well, I've been there, been in that struggle before, and the, you've got to reach out. I think there's, you know, whether it's your faith community, whether it's Christian spiritual mothers and fathers that are around us, you can't do it on your own. If you're in that bad of a position, you know, where things are not looking good, I think you've got to lean on other people. Of course, first and foremost, you lean on God. Uh, I think where sometimes Christians fall short is saying that's all there is. And no, God has put people in your life to help you. That's two or better than one. You know, we, we need people around us whether it's your pastor or a spiritual mentor, whoever it is, to be able to, and sometimes it, it, it's so extreme that, you know, we send we, we send people to therapy or to counseling. You know, I personally, I spent three weeks at the Paul Meyer Clinic in Dallas, Texas. My husband was there for six weeks. We were not okay. He was not okay mentally. It takes true people being able to help you through if you know that you can't do it on your own and having that awareness. Wow, that's so good. You know, let me ask you this question as well, Brittany. Uh, what, uh, why should somebody take a hold of your book here? Uh, you know, you're sharing a lot of powerful testimony, but what's in your book? If I'm watching right now, why should I go right now to Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, or whatever, and get my hands on this book? My book is, you know, I joke around, it's a tell-all about myself. <laughs> so, I mean, everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. And, um, you know, I love women and I love family businesses and I love leadership. And so it's a conglomerate of, of testimony and overcoming and fighting. I almost called it the faithful fight because I fought so hard for my marriage. I fought so hard for my life. But my publisher, Whitaker House, really liked the idea of an all, because it's not just marriage, it's also I fight for my family business. You know, my family, my brothers and I, we, we have one of the strongest family businesses because it is built on the foundation, Jesus and the leadership around that. And that's how, that's why I think our company has just been, um, has, has been exponentially successful since the pandemic. I mean, we're up more than we've ever been up. The problem is, you know, we talk about the, the, the labor crisis and whatnot, but again, I go back to like, God is the CEO of this company, mm -hmm. right? And so we are still seeing trouble. But I think the reason why, uh, you know, I would like it to encourage people to, to read the book is there's something in there for everybody. And um, if you are a working mom, if you're a stay at home mom, if you're a family business person, if you're a CEO, if you're in leadership, you know, a leader is anybody that has uh, real accountability over one person. So unless you're living under a rock, you are a leader. Amen. And us, we need learn. We need to continue to learn. We need to continue to grow. And that's, you know, why I put my book out there. Mm -hmm. You know, Brittany, one thing I just love about you so much is you're so authentic, you're so real and just relatable and just really appreciate just like your transparency and your openness because you really desire to see people walk in the fullness of who God has called them to be. We just have about 30 seconds left in our time with you in our interview. Can you just take a moment to pray for our viewers, for somebody that feels like they're at the their end of the rope, if they don't feel like they even have the faith to overcome their obstacle, I, can I you take a moment will. to pray for them? Jesus, we exalt you right now. You are our king. You are the author of the universe, God. This is a kingdom mindset that I pray right now over every viewer. I pray that you would give them just faith, that you would give them peace, and that you would let them know that there is much more to life than what they're experiencing right now and that there is hope on the other side. So I just pray right now and I pray for those folks to come into their lives to help rescue them right now, God. I just pray for miracles to happen through this show and thank you for, for the the amazing viewers and thank you for the production team and and the anchors who put this on day to day and strengthen them and build them up as well. Thank you, Brittany, so much. And I just want to encourage, if you just heard Brittany's prayer and you want to respond, give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Write down your prayer request. Write down what you're believing through. Write down what you need breakthrough because we have prayer partners that are always standing by that want to pray and stand in faith with you. We're so grateful. Thank you so much, Brittany, for joining us. Her book is Five Star Life, The Faithful Fight to Overcome Obstacles and Pursue Excellence. Well, we'll be right back after this break and we're going to talk more about your heart and how to encourage you. So don't go away. We love you. We'll be right back.
During this month of Thanksgiving, we want to say a special thank you for your faithful prayers and giving. We're excited to offer you this beautiful gratitude journal with your best gift to Cornerstone Television. With inspirational and thought-provoking prompts and scripture quotes, this guided journal will help you in your discovery of finding peace for anxious moments, joy in life's blessings, confidence to face every moment, and strength to persevere in hardship. This journal also makes an excellent gift. Its soft touch matte lamination gives a silky smooth texture to the hard cover. High quality binding allows pages to lay flat when open and a beautiful satin ribbon conveniently keeps your place. Request this special journal when you give your best gift. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. Well, if you're just tuning in right now, I tell you what, you are scheduled for a breakthrough. We're talking about overcoming adversity, using obstacles and turning them into opportunities. You just heard a powerful, powerful testimony from Brittany. And you know what, Sydney, I really believe that there's many people out there right now that they are strategically in line for a breakthrough and they're facing all sorts of adversity. I love talking about adversity. Mm. A lot of people get discouraged yeah. about it, but I don't because I've learned to set my clock mm. by on. trouble, realizing <laughs> that on the other side of yeah. it, there's going to be a breakthrough through and yeah. something big is going to happen. A lot of people don't realize in this moment that there are opportunities and new doors and windows of opportunity that are coming if they can just get through and break through in this season. Oh, that is such a good word. Like grab onto that, that it's a time for breakthrough. I know there's so much is happening in our world. So much is happening in our nation. So much is happening right there in your home. But now is the time that this is why we even do hope today. We want to bring hope. We want to bring encouragement to you. We want you to know that you can stand another day because I know I just really feel like there's mm -hmm. just been such an assault on yeah. the believers. There's a weariness and I'm going to be very transparent. This has been a very, very hard season for my husband and I, where I just feel like every side we're getting hit. Every side, pew, 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 pew and you just have to stand back up and just trust and stand on the word of God. And even I've been getting kind of violent in my prayers yeah, and just yeah. like waking up and being like, I declare and decree this. I, God, you said this and this is going to happen and devil get the back off of my family. You know, just certain things where I think it's a time where we have to just really get in the fight and know like we will win. And I just know if we're going through all this hardship, if we're going through all this tribulation, y'all, we know that there's a harvest is coming. Amen. We know something is breaking forth because the enemy wants to just bring us down, but we can't. This is the time to fight and Understand. Tom, what are your thoughts? What's God speaking in your heart now to share with our viewers? Well, if you look behind me, you see a new day dawning. And I really believe that that's the Holy Spirit saying to our viewers, saying to us literally that hang in there because the dawn is getting ready to begin. I, I'm reminded of a beautiful painting that was done in the 19th century called The Light of the World. And it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful depiction about Jesus Christ, who is indeed the light of the world. And it's, it, you'll, you'll recall seeing this painting, but it's Jesus knocking onto the door of a weathered cottage. And, and with the, I, the way that I heard the story is uh, when it was first put on exhibition in London, England, at St. Peter's uh, Cathedral there, uh, there were big lines of people that came to see this painting. And one was an elderly gentleman and he talked to this young man and he said, you know, there's something that bothers me about this painting, something that is missing. And he said, if you look carefully at the door to which Jesus is knocking, there is no handle on the outside. And this young artist looked at the older gentleman and he said, with all due respect, he said, please understand that is not a mistake. Because although Jesus Christ, indeed, the light of the world stands at the door to our heart and knocks, it is a door that can only open from within. Now, what's interesting is that artist uh, did took up over two years to do that painting. And, and he had to, to go to Bethlehem in order to see the dawn, in order to get the perfect color for that new day. And, and that's why the painting took two years to do. And, and I, I remember as I read about that and kind of researched that painting, how this artist labored because he wanted the color of the dawn to be perfect. And so he went to the birthplace of the light of the world and there saw the morning sun, saw that morning dawn, saw the color of that sky. And that was what completed that painting. For you and me, the lesson is very, very clear that it is a new day and, and that dawn is getting ready to begin. 
And so like the, the writer of Lamentations, talking about all of the wrongs that we have done, talking about all of the, all of the, uh, the, the situation that we're in, we deserve to be there because of our disobedience to God. But dear God, you are faithful. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Dear God, great is your faithfulness unto me. Indeed, God's faithfulness is great among us today. So just hang in there. A new day is dawning. You know, Tom, that is so good, and I so appreciate that. And I believe that there's many of you watching that even in this 30-minute segment, God is prophetically declaring to you that you need to become more violent than what's coming up against you. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but that the more violent take it by force. This is your season to rise up and to take it by force. God is turning the tide right now. Your midnight is turning today. And you know what's amazing, Sydney, is this. Midnight is really when a new day starts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't start just when the sun's come up. And there are people watching right now, you don't even realize that you've been in the process of a new day. You're transitioning to a new day, into a new season. Encourage yourself in the Lord and realize the best is yet to come. Well, I feel like you, you know, you're like on fire. You and Tom are on fire. It's come like, on. shoo, it's like a new day dawning <laughs> and it's just such a good thing. This is why we have Christian television Amen. is exactly for this. You can tune into anything else right now, but I'm telling you right now, this is the only station, yes. the only show where you're going to get hope, where we're going to speak right into Come your on. situation. We're going to speak right into that pain because you know, we're all in this together. We are all family. We are the body of Christ. And Pastor Jay, I love what you said about the kingdom suffers violent, but the violent take it by force. It is time for us to get Come violent. Right. I have been in a That's season right. where I'm like, I am not playing. Get Amen. off my family, get off my marriage, get off my kids, whatever needs to get he needs to back up off today. You stand on that and you start speaking the word. You start declaring the thing and we are going to see things break. Even in my own family, like with things that we've been walking through with my um, brother-in-law, like I just want to say we were praying and he just started breathing a little Come bit on. on his own. It's Come just on. a miracle. Just thank God for the little miracles each and every day. We have only 30 seconds left. Any final quick thoughts? You know what? I just really believe there's a great and effectual door mm -hmm. that has opened up for you. There's a lot at stake. Don't give the devil any ground. Just like Sydney just mentioned, take it by force. It's yours today in Jesus' name. It's yours today in Jesus' name. Well, it's been such a joy with Tom and Jay. It's been so great. And look at the sunshine. It's a new day mm -hmm. dawning. Let's hold on to that. Yes. Let's stand on yes. that. It is a new dawn today in our lives, in our families' lives, in our children's lives, in our marriages. That's the great hope. We're holding on to Jesus. Don't let go. And we're going to see a new day. Have a great one. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the process of healing. Author and Pastor Steve Carter invites you to live out the joy, peace, and purpose for which God created you. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.